You're 21 now. You know what that means. It's a tradition. Why you got a mess with McCarthy family tradition, son? Listen to me, Ronald. I don't even know what's good for you anyway. Okay. Take it from me. Take it from me. Parents suck. Parents suck. Okay. Uh, Larry, I've never done this before. Okay. Um. Oh! My name is April and I'm here with the Bozeman International Film Festival and today we are talking to Caleb Morgan who is the director of McCarthy 21. Caleb why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey there April thank you so much for having me I'm really uh, excited to be a part of this. Um, yeah I'm a filmmaker as you said and I went to school actually in Bozeman Montana. I attended Montana State University. That's and so cool. Yeah, it, it means the world to me to be coming back to, you know, I haven't been back to Bozeman since I graduated. So, oh, wow. I'm, yeah, I'm really grateful for the Bozeman International Film Festival for, you know, bringing me back and give me a reason to come back to the old stomping grounds. So. Yeah. What do you think, is there something that you learned at MSU that really um, made making McCarthy 21 possible? Like, what's the link between the two? I definitely learned so many valuable things at MSU. One of them being uh, from my screenwriting teacher, Kat Dale, who gave me the passion for screenwriting and all of my, you know, just peers at the school as well. Um, there's too many names to mention, but I'd say, you know, like Elliot, he was my cinemat cinematographer and he helped a lot just like to bring, you know, he helped me shoot three films together while we were at MSU. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one actually wasn't part of like the academia at the school, but we still had a great time making it. And uh, yeah, I'd say that it was like an accumulation of everything we'd learned uh, going into this one. So I actually, I really love the cinematography in this um, in particular. It's very stylized. Um, how did you, what were some of your inspirations for the style of this film? Sure, that's a great question. I think uh, some of the biggest inspirations for this film were um, Breaking Bad, just in terms of its like visual style has always been very impactful for me. I mm -hmm. find that they tend to put the camera like exactly where they want you to like see the action happening, whether that's inside of like a, you know, a box where like that peanut butter and jelly sandwich gets thrown inside the box. And, Great shot. Uh, thank you, yeah. We like taped a box around the, around the lens for that. And uh, you know, and like, <laughs> we had like a lens filter on it and uh -huh. uh, the actor just like beamed the sandwich onto the lens. Elliot was like, just throw it harder. Um, so, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that, and then, yeah, I, you know, a lot of inspiration comes from just working with my peers and like a lot of the collaboration that they brought to the table as well, whether that was like shot ideas or just like, you know, suggestions to the story. So. Yeah. I love that. So would you say that as a director, you're more like collaborative or more like singular in your vision? Sure. You, you know, that's, that's another great question. I think for the most part, it's like, when it comes to pre-production, sometimes I can be a little bit headstrong about my ideas, but then like a lot of the times, once we get into production, we start filming things, like people will throw ideas out there and I'm like, yes, why didn't I think of that? Like, and it, you know, a lot of the times it ends up being like happy accidents, you know? And so, yeah, film yeah. sets are full of those happy accidents. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> oh wait, actually that looks really cool. Yeah, let's right. keep that. Yeah, um, yeah sure. <laughs> Do you have any other stories of happy accidents on set or any funny stories? Yeah, I think one of the biggest ones, and I've kind of discussed this before about this project, is um, I like actually wasn't planning to act as as Larry in the film. Um, it was a completely accidental thing where you did a that... great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was last moment, you know, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, I'd written it for someone else in mind, and then they ended up testing positive for COVID the day before production. And I was like, well, I guess I'll step in and do this. 
And I, I'm grateful that I did it. I, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, but the thing was, is like, you know, there's the part where they're eating the peanut butter jelly and American cheese sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think I was going to have to be the one eating them. So I think it came back to bite me that I was trying to put that on others. <laughs> yeah. Where did you come up with that particular sandwich? Is that like a, a go-to for you? Did someone in your life make those or was it just like nightmare imagination <laughs> fuel? Yeah, it, it must have been a nightmare. Honestly, I, I um, am very grateful that I'd never tried it before that said. It's not a go-to for me. Um, Good. And I never ended yeah. on trying it again. No, um, I, don't, but, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it was a really wonderful time. And uh, I, I think it turned out, you know, better than we could have imagined in a lot of ways. We had, um, not to give away too much of a spoiler, but there's a part where a hand is shown and we were going to have someone make like a prosthetic hand to like mm -hmm. have separate. Um, unfortunately, that fell through the cracks and we weren't able to have it in time so what we did was you know we would just either like frame it out of the shot or like have someone like holding my hand from down below so it ended up working but yeah I actually really love that shot I feel like it was more humorous to me because of kind of the obviousness of the practical effects you know there's mm -hmm. a huge like charm and kind of a resurgence of interest in practical effects especially in like horror and and comedy uh was that something that was important to you or was it just a necessary like a necessary thing um within the budget that's a good point I mean I think yeah like it, it's kind of hand in hand with that right where it's like no pun intended but um I uh like yeah a lot of it was like I wanted it to look as real as possible that's why we were trying to put in the budget to have the prosthetic but then there was a bit of that like independent film charm with it, right? Where it's just like, oh, that looks campy. It's intentional. Um, and it, I, I think to go back to what we said before, it, it is a bit of like a happy accident on that. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I, I love that all so much. Um, there is a specific line that I really loved that your character said which um, you say, not everyone can please their parents, which was so funny to me because like, can any of us please right. our parents? Um, and <laughs> it, it really solidified for me the like coming of age sort of arc um, that Ronald goes through. So tell me about that and like the story and the themes that you wanted to work with. For sure. Um, you know, I, I thanks for bringing that up. Like, I, I think in that moment, the irony of him saying, like, not everyone can please their parents really comes from the fact that, you know, Larry had no parents, he <laughs> was an orphan. Uh, and so it's like, how do you have any sort of perspective on the situation? Um, however, like, kind of, you know, just in a general standpoint, I was trying to, like, definitely play on that trope of, like, parents' expectations for people to like, you know, go on and be a dentist or do something conventional, right? And I think that like in my life, you know, my parents have thankfully have been very um, supportive in my filmmaking endeavor, but you know, it's like, there's that societal pressure to go and do something normal. Um, and I think that I was trying to kind of dig in that and make it very absurd with uh, what, what his parents were pushing on him without any spoilers. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think that that's kind of where that root came from with that. Very cool. It had a, a very um, nostalgic feel, like all of the production design and the costumes. And it's funny because I was sort of trying to figure out if it was a period piece or not, but because these styles are so popular now, I would just couldn't, I was like, are they just kind of stylish or? So tell me about um, establishing that sort of nostalgic feel and the costumes yeah. and things like that. Right. So, I mean, that that's a good point. I think it was semi-unintentional um, to make it kind of nostalgic. Elliot, he tends to shoot on these wonderful, like, um, vintage lenses that give it that kind of, like, film grain look. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, of course, the, you know, aesthetic there. But with the production design, um, I like just wanted to make it a very loud and um, 
uh, establishing house that he came from, you know? And so that on Wilson Street, Wilson Avenue, I can't remember, I haven't been in Bozeman in a while. Um, it, there's like a bunch of old like period houses from like the late 1800s, early 1900s. And we saw that bright pink one and we were like, oh, that's the one we got it. You know, it's very loud, yeah. it's very expressive. Um, and so, yeah, there, there's a mixture of that. And then some like, you know, there's a little bit of nostalgia from like me, like my age of, you know, the upbringing in the early 2000s with like the, the slide up keyboard phone and everything. Yes. And like the, the party hat and the, I mean, the whole birthday party scene just felt like the birthday party I always wanted to have as right. a kid, you know, like growing up in the 90s. So yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that too, because I think in the 90s, we got so many cool coming of age stories. It was like a really popular genre at the time. And so like playing on that with kind of a contemporary absurdism really hit for me. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the funny thing about that uh, that birthday party scene is like when we threw the cake in his face, like mm -hmm. we had a very pristine and like good looking store-bought cake, you know, and then we would like set it down and then immediately hand the, the other actor, Lou, we would ha hand him just like a, like, you know, terribly baked piece of cake with frosting on it. And then he would right. throw it in the face. So that way we didn't have to mess up the, the pristine one. Right. <laughs> but... How many times did he have to do that? Um, I think we did it three times. And by the end, it was getting really hard to wipe all the frosting out of his glasses. Oh uh, no. Yeah, thankfully um, at the end of, that was at the very end of production. So we didn't have to keep okay. using those glasses after that, but. Very cool. <laughs> Did yeah. you know your lead actor beforehand? Is he a friend of yours or? Yeah, he um, he had actually acted in my first film at MSU called Thanks for Calling. And uh, it was his acting debut and we had just wanted to work together again. In fact, this upcoming weekend, we're gonna make a little bit of a short together before the film festival. So yeah, we're, we're you know, just always trying to work together because he's, a, he's hilarious, um, and B, yeah. he's talented, and I, I really enjoy what he brings to the table, um, so. Yeah, you guys had great chemistry, again, for, like, not being cast until the day before. Thanks, yeah, it was, we, like, he came over that night, and we just, like, practiced for, like, you know, six hours, and we were like, all right, we got it, I guess, and then, mm -hmm. when, so. Wow, yeah. so you... You took on so you like had so many hats in this. So director, writer, yeah. actor, producer, I'm assuming, and editor. Right. Yeah. I, I had a producer. Her name was Alara Jones, and she did a great mm -hmm. job. Oh, great. However, we, yeah. we did kind of co co-produce mm -hmm. together. But yeah, a lot of the times I, I wear a lot of hats, and sometimes I wonder if it's too many. <laughs> Uh, to like a fault a little bit like maybe I should distribute the creation between more people but I, I enjoy editing I really love making the story from pre-production all the way through post-production you know it's just what I'm passionate about so that's why I tend to do that. <laughs> I thought the editing style again was very unique um, the like little zooms um, it, during the, the sandwich scene really uh, made me laugh and I think that using editing to, I mean, comedy is all about timing, right? So mm -hmm. the editor, a lot of the times in comedies, you know, makes the jokes. Um, so I, did you have some of these editing tricks, not tricks, editing choices planned ahead of time? Or was it something that you kind of discovered after the fact? It's another great question. Um, I think for the most part, uh, a lot of the editing you know, it, it comes in the script, obviously, like with with like um, like when I want to cut to certain scenes and stuff. But sometimes that doesn't end up working, so you know I'll just change it in the post production. But um, I'm trying to think. I think you know it didn't really come together until the score came in, which my buddy Beck Bomber did an amazing job. Um, you know, kind of creating these songs with lyrics that catered to what was going on. Um, but yeah, like for the most part, I, I kind of just figured it out as I went with the edit, um, but yeah. Well, Caleb, it's been so lovely speaking to you. Thank you for telling us all about McCarthy 21. 
And if you attend the Bozeman International Film Festival this year, you'll be able to watch it, but you can also uh, purchase tickets online to be able to have access to our 2023 lineup. So yeah, thank you so much, Kayla. Thanks again, April. It was really nice talking to you and I look forward to potentially meeting you if you're there. Yeah, me too. <laughs>